There are four different places where it is claimed that St. Kevin is buried. One of the places with the strongest claims to being St. Kevin's burial spot is here at Reeford Church. There are three arguments in favour of Reeford Church being his burial place. Number one, the kings of Lyon, of the province of Lyon or Leinster as it's now called, are buried here at Reeford Church. The O'Burdens, the O'Tools and the Feelands, the kings of Lyon are all buried here. And the argument is that because they were the kings of Lyon, they would have the privilege of being buried alongside the saint. The second argument in favour of St. Kevin being buried here is that it was clearly the number one pilgrimage church. And number three, many archaeologists claim that in St. Kevin's time the monastery was completely centred up here. That it was only later on that the monastic city was built further down the valley. The late Irish historian, the Reverend John Ryan, states... Today, the site of that earliest of churches is known as the Reeferte, the Royal Graves, a name that is itself a source of history. For the kings of Leinster, through many centuries, were buried at Lendelock, and as kings were buried beside that church that was held to be of all the churches the most venerable. Obviously, this is the church in which, or beside which, the founder himself was buried. Nor is this the sole proof that the church called Reeferte marks the original site. In the course of time, Glendalough became a famous place of pilgrimage. Now the pilgrimages from time immemorial began at Hollywood and ended always at Reefert, and not at the expanded site lower down the valley. That in itself is highly significant. You will find that quotation from Father John Ryan in my book, St. Kevin and the True Story of Glendalough. So the arguments in favour of St. Kevin being buried here at Reeford are quite strong. But guess what? He's not buried here. Yes, the kings of Lyon are buried here. This was a very special church. St. Kevin's cell is just up on the bank behind us. This church is almost certainly built over where there was a little church in the time of St. Kevin and where St. Kevin celebrated Mass for countless years. But that does not mean that he's buried here. And secondly, I believe those archaeologists who claim that the monastic city was only built much later are wrong. I believe that St. Kevin had his centre up here, his cell up here, celebrated Mass up here, lived up here for much of his life. But as then often happened, the leader of the monastery, what we'd now call the abbot or the prior, he tended to live about a mile apart from the main monastery, where he could have seclusion and contemplation. And I would suggest that that is what happened here in Glendalough. Yes, St. Kevin lived up here approximately a mile from where the main monastery was established. But also, and much more crucially, in the European Latin life of St. Kevin, it states that miracles were still taking place to this day, that is the day that that book was written, that miracles were still taking place at his tomb. And from the main Latin life of St. Kevin that was written here in Ireland, it is claimed that the monks brought St. Kevin down to the monastic city to look after him in his old age. And it's clearly implied that St. Kevin is buried down at the monastic city. Referring to the monastic city, St. Kevin is quoted as saying, In this place my city shall grow where my resurrection shall be. And the place of one's resurrection is, of course, the place of one's burial. So it's clearly implied there that he is buried down at the monastic city. We can say that at the time that the Latin lives of St. Kevin were written, there was a known tomb of St. Kevin, and that it was down in the monastic city and not up at Reeford Church. 
But if he's not buried at Reeford, where then is he buried? There is also a very strong tradition that St. Kevin is buried either within St. Mary's Church here or alongside it. We find this in many articles about Lendelock, and it appears to have been passed down through the generations. But guess what? He's not buried here. This was the nun's church, the convent church, that was outside the inner boundary of the monastery. Do you really believe that the monks would have allowed the nuns to have his body? Or would it be known as St. Mary's if St. Kevin was buried here? I think not on either account. And if he is not buried at Reeford, and if he's not buried in St. Mary's, then where is he buried? In his book on Glendalough, George McClafferty points to the priest's house as a, the likely burial place of St. Kevin. He says it's the very type of little building that could well be built over the tomb of the saint. But guess what? St. Kevin ain't buried here. This little building was originally known as the Lower Lawn of St. Kevin, the Library of St. Kevin. It could well have been the place where the scholars wrote the famous books that were associated with the monasteries. Or it could have been the place where the relics of St. Kevin was kept. But, but there is one thing for certain. It would not have been known as the Library of St. Kevin if it was built over his tomb. Now, if he's not buried up at Reefer Church, if he's not buried in St. Mary's Church, if he's not buried here in the priest's house, then where is he buried? Most of the ancient churches had living quarters known as cells alongside them. And because of that, they were known as kill. The word killer, silla or killer, for cell, the cell of. Now, this little church is not called Kilcavine. Instead, it is called Crowcavine, the house or hut of Kevin. Now, why is it that it's called the House of Kevin rather than the Sil Kilkevin, or Church of Kevin? And I would suggest that the most likely reason is that it's either built over where his tomb was or it's built over the spot where he lived in his old age, and quite possibly both. The proper doorway to Crowcavine is at the western end but it is never used today. This is the doorway that would, be, would have been used continuously in the time of the monastery. The present church, which was clearly built on the site of an earlier church, had an east window and this end. You can just about see the outline of the window uh, just over the archway. And then sometime after the year 1150, when they developed the ability to build the archways, that little archway was put on and there was an extension out where most likely the altar would have been. But before the year 1150, the altar would have been just inside that archway. And I am as convinced as I possibly can be that St. Kevin is buried just in there, just inside that archway. That gate, which was only added in relatively recent years, is today used by the Office of Public Works for bringing people into Crowcavian, those who have the tickets to go in. I suspect that in doing so, they're walking right over St. Kevin's tomb. And perhaps that is symbolic of what has happened here in Glendalough. While it is not possible to be 100% sure of where exactly St. Kevin is buried, it is possible to be 100% sure of where within the bounds of the ancient monastery St. Kevin is honoured today. And that is God's cottage which actually is partially within the bounds of the religious section of the ancient monastery and within the bounds of the entire monastery. Lord Jesus, we thank you for St. Kevin. We thank you for his outstanding example. 
We pray, Lord Jesus, through his intercession, that we may be able to follow in his footsteps. We pray, Lord Jesus, that each day we will take a further step in growing in a relationship with you. A further step in our commitment to you. A further step in our openness to the Holy Spirit. And I ask your blessing, Lord Jesus, for whoever is watching this video, that your blessing may go out to them right at this moment. That your love will surround them. And that the power of your Holy Spirit will come upon them. And whatever prayer is in each person's heart, through the intercession of Saint Kevin, I pray, Lord Jesus, that right at this moment, right at this moment, your blessing will go out to each of their intentions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.